Welcome to the video. Today, we're gonna to be going through how to start up an EC2 instance in AWS. And for a lot of people, cloud computing can be confusing, it can be difficult, right? So we're gonna to try to break it down and make it as easy as possible so that you all can start up an EC2 instance in a relatively quick amount of time. First step here, right? We see the AWS Management Console. I just Googled it. We're gonna click it. Then we're gonna hit sign in. You all are gonna either have to uh, register an account or use a pre-existing account. Um, I'm already signed into this, so I can just hit this button and it will bring me to the AWS console. All right, so now we have the console. We see an overview of everything that's going on. I see all of the different panes or a couple of the recently visited panes that I could go to right now. I also see some cost and usages from all my other EC2 instances and all the other uh, resources I provisioned. As you can see, I'm spending some big money in this platform. Um, so first things first, right? In order to start up an EC2 instance, we have to navigate to the EC2 section. So all you got to do is type in EC2 and you'll see it pop up here under services, right? This is where we're going to set up our server. Now, quick uh, hint alert that you might not, not have known. This star here, if you click it, it'll actually add the EC2 shortcut to your AWS console pane. And that'll allow you to save time in the future. Now, this works for all of the different services. Um, EC2 is probably one that you're going to be using quite a bit if you're doing cloud computing. So I do recommend you hit that star. Now I'm going to click on EC2 so it can bring me to the actual dashboard itself. And now that we're here, right, we can see once again another overview of what we're working with. I'm going to go over here to instances. As you probably could guess by looking around, you know, doing a little ocular observation. In the top right corner, we have launch instances, right? And this is one of the ways in which we can launch an instance. Now, obviously, there are a couple other ways, right? More detailed ways, which I'll show in other videos, which is we can launch from templates. We can use AMIs, right? Which stands for basically just Amazon Machine Images. For today, we're going to be using this quick start button in the top right corner, this launch instance button and hitting it. So as long as you are currently in the new EC2 experience, like I am right now, your launch button will bring you to the same exact page as I see here. Keep in mind, if you currently have this unchecked, right, you have it looking like this, your console will look a little bit different, right? So just keep that in mind. If you want to follow along to a T, you're going to want to put this into the new EC2 experience, right? Because launching an instance here will look a little bit different. So I hit launch instance. And the first thing it's going to ask us, right, is firstly, what's the name? I'm going to put YouTube. Oh, how do I spell that? YouTube. Uh, let's call it EC2 instance, right? Just give it a real basic name. Next up, it's going to ask us what type of operating system we want to put on our machine. Now, obviously, this is going to depend on what you want to do. I'm going to start up a Windows image, right? I, I just thought that that would probably be good. I think most people tend to be familiar with Windows, right? So I thought it'd be good just to start that up. I'm going to leave it at this base 2022 uh, image that they had it already preset to. Uh, but keep in mind, right, similar to most operating systems, Windows has all these different years and versions you could pick from, right? So if you wanted to choose something that was specific, let's say for whatever reason, you love 2012 R2 base Windows, you can't use anything else, right? You can find that here, which is great. The other thing to note with these operating systems is some of these are free tier eligible and others are not. What does that mean? Basically, these instances can be used for free, right? And it's past a certain amount of credits, right? You can only have these free instances up for so long until they charge you. But there is a little bit of leeway, especially if you're just playing around with these things. There's a little bit of leeway uh, in order for you to not get charged while practicing in these environments. So I'm going to leave it on the first one here because as you saw before, I'm spending big money. I don't want to dig deeper into my, my pockets. So I just selected a Windows 2022 server uh, base edition, right? And we could see some more descriptors right here. We could see the AMI ID, which you do not need, the architecture, right? And the full description. Next up is instance type, right? So we just picked the operating system of our computer. You could think of that as Linux, Windows, Mac OS, right? That's the operating system. The next thing is picking the actual hardware that that operating system will sit on, right? So this is going to be the power of our machine, right? Are we building a, a, a badass machine that's going to be able to do tons of stuff and run multiple processes at the same time and do all of this different logic and processing, right? Or are we going to be running the uh, T2 micro, which is free tier eligible, which is not so capable, right? 
Uh, for this video, I'm going to be using T2 Micro because once again, free. We do like free. Um, and you can actually see some of the statistics or some of the, uh, the actual stats on the hardware here. Right? So for example, we see T2 Micro. It has one CPU, which is central processing unit, which is a low amount. It has one GB of memory, which is also a low amount. And those are just two things you should keep in mind. Right? So when it comes to picking your machine, it's largely going to depend on what you're using your machine to do. For example, when I run my Honeypot project and I need to do a lot more processing and I know I'm going to be using the machine more and more, I tend to do either an, an XL machine or a 2XL, right? Which is four CPUs and 16 gigs of memory or eight and 32. Once again, for the purposes of this video and for the purposes of learning, we're going with T2 Micro free tier. It'll be just fine for what we need. Next up is key pair, right? The best way to think about this is if you've never used key pairs before, in order for you to access your machine, in order for Amazon to verify it's you who's trying to RDP in or connect in, you're going to need to set up a key pair, right? This is gonna be something that's downloaded to your machine and saved to your machine that you can use to obtain the password to get into our Windows system here. So I already have a couple key, uh, key pairs set up, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to make another one. I'm gonna hit create new key pair Leave it in the .pem format, right? Unless you're using the tool PuTTY, uh, which we will not be using, right? We're using RDP since this is Windows, right? So just make sure it is in .pem. I'm gonna do YouTube key part two and hit create key pair. As you can see in the bottom left here, it just downloaded that key pair to my system, right? So I now have the keys required to get into my system as soon as it is up and running. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more. These are some network settings. If you are just trying to start up an instance quickly, right? You can just literally leave this all default. It'll set the security group to be what you need. It'll set the RDP to be what you need. I'll talk through it quite briefly. Um, but once again, this is just to get us up and running. So I'm gonna hit edit just to show you all the different options. VPC stands for virtual private cloud. Basically in the same way that in real life you have different networks, right? With VPCs, you have different networks that you could put your machine on. Right now, I haven't created another VPC, so I'm going to leave it on the default. Subnet, right? This is going to be similar to subnets in real life, right? You have all of these different options. So within a network, you could have virtual separation, right? And you could place it in. I'm just going to put no preference because once again, we're not setting up a specific lab right now. We're not uh, setting up a specific network. All I'm going to be doing is creating a machine, connecting to it just to get you all started in AWS. After this, auto assign public IP. If you want internet access on your machine, which we will for this demo, you will need to make sure it has a public IP. A public IP is how that machine interfaces with the internet. And without it, you can have access to that machine on a private network, but you will not be able to use that machine to access the internet. Security groups, this is going to be our firewall rules, right? So basically what I can do with security groups is I could write what we see down here, which are rules. And those rules can tell us who to allow and deny to our system. For example, we see when it comes to RDP, TCP on port 3389, right? We can do, uh, or, or we currently have this open to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 forward slash zero IP addresses. This might seem confusing, but that is actually what it means to be accessible by all IP addresses. If you want your machine to only be accessible via your IP, you can change this to my IP and it'll automatically scan the IP address you're using and it'll set it up so that only you can connect to your Amazon uh, EC2 instance, right? So if somebody down the block has a different IP address than you and they try to connect, they will not be allowed. Uh, keep in mind, if you do select the my IP option, if you use a VPN, you will not be able to connect to your machine, right? VPNs will give you a different IP address and therefore kind of break this. I'm gonna leave this set to anywhere Right, by the time this video is up, nobody's gonna be able to connect to this instance because it'll already be destroyed. So this is our security group. Uh, it's giving it a default name of Launch Wizard 3. I'm gonna change this to YouTube security group just so I have some logical separation. Description can be whatever, right? This is arbitrary as well. The real thing that matters is this single rule down here, which is RDP. This is how we're gonna connect to our machine, leaving the port the same anywhere right? Meaning that any IP address can do RDP to our machine. 
Next up is storage. I'm not going to be saving too much on this machine, so I'm going to leave it at 30 gigabytes. Uh, use your own discretion on how much you think you need. Keep in mind, most computers by default have about 500 gigabytes, so 30 is quite low, uh, but we will leave it all the same. Now, there's advanced details. I doubt if you're just getting started up that you're going to need to touch any of these. The ones that you probably will dive into somewhat earlier on in your journey are these IAM instance profiles. This stands for Identity Access Management. This is basically going to be so that you can set different rules and different roles for who can do what on these systems. Outside of that, the rest of these you can leave default, right? So for advanced, we're just going to leave it all the same, right? We've set up the core of our machine. Now we see a quick little summary of everything we did. We see the Windows Server 2022. We see the hardware we selected, the security group, right? And we can view that by clicking here. It'll actually pop the pane to the left again. And we see the storage. Now we also see in terms of free tier, if you all are practicing, what free tier means, right? So this means in our first year, we can use 750 hours of T2 micro. That might not sound like a lot, uh, and that's because it, or that might sound like a lot, but it really isn't that much. Um, and we can use that without charge, right? Uh, so keep in mind, we can see here that this is currently free, which is very nice. I then hit launch instance and it'll say success. In order to see our instances, I can click either up here, right? The little hyperlink, they call these breadcrumbs, the trails of the different pages you've gone to. I could click on this breadcrumb here, or I could pop this pane back out and hit instances. And you will see now I have two terminated instances. These are ones I did from other days. And I have the new instance that I just started up and I've named YouTube EC2 instance. Now, this will not work right away. And what do I mean by that? If I try to connect to this, right, you can actually see it doesn't even let me. And that's because the instance state is pending. I'm going to hit refresh. Wow. All right. It's running. Really cool. I should be able to connect to it, right? wrong. If I connect now and I try to RDP in and I'll, I'll show this all again. I'm just trying to show the error here. Basically, it's just going to, it's going to hang, right? It's not going to let me RDP in. Now you might say, why doesn't this allow me to connect? It says instant state running. I should be able to connect. It allows me to click the connect button. Uh, unfortunately, Amazon has this weird little quirk where when, until the status check changes from initializing to ready, we will not be able to connect to this machine. If I refresh, this should be ready now. Now that we see the status check has changed to two of two checks passed, we should now be able to connect to our instance with no problems. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click connect. Uh, the interesting thing before I click connect is you could actually see all of the summary of everything we set up. You could see the public IP address. We could see the private IP address. You see all this other information, the instance type, a lot of it that we set up while we were going through the setup process. So I'm going to highlight this instance, hit connect, go to RDP client. This is a Windows machine, so we're going to be using RDP. If we were using a Linux machine, we would either use the session manager uh, or SSH, right? But since it's Windows, RDP it is. Next up, in order for us to get the password for the session, we need to actually use the key that we downloaded earlier. So if I hit get password, right? So once again, oops. So if I hit password, get password, I will see private key. I get to upload the private key here. Hit decrypt password, and I will get the password for my server right here. Now what I'm able to do is hit download remote desktop file. I'm able to hit that download, click connect, enter the password we just received. So I'm just going to paste it in. And this, once I hit yes, will connect us to our Windows machine. So if you got this far, to explain what you've done, you've logged into Amazon, you've started up an Amazon EC2 instance, which is basically just a computer that Amazon owns that you're renting out, and we have now connected to it, right? And this machine, once again, it's on a T2 micro, so it's going to run very slowly. It's a very weak machine. Uh, so we're going to get a black screen for a little bit, but... I promise in just a minute, it'll look just like the, the, the light windows blue that we've all come to love. You know, the, they're known for their, uh, their design and we're in our machine, right? Once again, this is my main machine in the background, the machine I actually own. And this window is a machine that is remotely stored somewhere in, I'm currently in North Virginia, somewhere in a North Virginian data center, 
right all the way under Amazon's watch, right? So here we are. Uh, now you might be wondering, what can I do in this machine? Uh, pretty much everything, right? All the things you could normally do with the Windows instance, you could really do here. Uh, I'm gonna show the internet functionality and then we'll call it a day. Uh, but I'm going to click on this icon down here. It's going to load for 30 minutes because it's a T2 micro. Once again, uh, free does not mean good. It just means free. All right. So this is loading at a snail's pace. And we have internet. Cool. We're good. Start without data. All right. So that's it. Before we close up the video, the last thing I want to show you all the way to close this instance down is to hit this X. It'll actually disconnect the session. And then when you're back in your Amazon console, go back to instances. You'll see that this machine is running. I'm going to highlight this machine to break down and delete all the things we did. You can hit terminate instance. If you just want to stop your instance so it's not actively charging you for that, uh, that machine you have set up, you can hit stop. Terminate will destroy the machine and basically reprovision the space so that somebody else can use it. Uh, since we're done with the video, I'm going to hit terminate. It's going to say all the stuff, basically saying all your information will be lost. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. And then when I hit refresh, you will see that it is shutting down. That wraps us up for how to start up an EC2 instance in AWS. If you'd like to see more videos on how to do other things in AWS, just let me know. I love making these videos. And as always, please subscribe if you want to see more content. Smash that like button if you want. Uh, and otherwise, let me know in the comments what you all would like to see next. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.